Oh, What's boy. up, guys? Oh. I'm Lauren Francesca. I'm Brad Brunberg. And you're watching How, How to, to Start. start. Yeah. And we're going to start tonight. Yeah. Oh, today with. We have your friend here, a really cool, amazing guest, and, and a guy that I watched. Like, you yeah. were in my house since well, I was born, basically. Well, you left, and I, and you like, left the front I, door open. Yeah. So, Mr. Like, oh. Dave Coulier. Hi. Yay. Thank you for having me. Oh, oh, so, so you're known as one of the funniest characters on Full House. How did you do it? How did you book the sitcom? What did you? Yeah. Well, uh, I was a stand-up for a long, long time and uh, worked my way up as a stand-up. And what, what, what age did you start being doing stand-up? I was 18. I was still in Detroit, and I was working at a place called the Comedy Castle that started there. And um, I went four years to um, college prep high school, so everybody in my family thought, oh, well, he's going to go off to college. And then, <laughs> no, I, I uh, yeah, my parents spent all this money on, on that. And then I said, oh, I'm going to go to Los Angeles and tell jokes. And they're like, where did we go wrong? You <laughs> were supposed to be a doctor. <laughs> so uh, doctor I came comedy, out here. Dr. Comedy. So I, yeah, so I came out here and uh, started working at the comedy store right away. And um, my group was... Bob Saget and Gary Shandling and Dennis Miller and Jerry Seinfeld and Jim Carrey and Robin Williams and Jay Leno and Whoa. David Letterman. That's so and cool. So I was sharing the stage with, with those guys every single night. So it was you, you couldn't go on stage and kind of lay off. You had to kind of throw your fastball every joke. And, and so it became kind of difficult to try new stuff here in L.A. because there were so many people sitting in the audience wanting this killer show every night. So then I went on the road and um, I did lots of road gigs. I mean, I did 42 weeks one year on the road, wow. just club after club after club, and just you know, just really had a work ethic and and kept working as hard as I could. And the Detroit and, boy in you, yeah, <laughs> it's the Midwest in me. Yeah. And and you know, I always wanted to do different things. So I was writing and I was producing things. And I was doing a lot of cartoon voices. Scooby Doo was the first show I ever got hired on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I, yeah and cool. um, and so I worked on the Jetsons and I worked on the Muppet Babies on CBS. We won four Emmy awards. Wow. And I got to work with Jim Henson. And so, you know, I was always trying to. In fact, one time I was at the comedy store and I was probably 22 years old and a bunch of comedians came up to me and they're like, hey, can we talk to you for a second? I was like, yeah, how are you guys? <laughs> <laughs> the comedians want to talk to me. And so they said, how are you getting all of this? You're on Scooby-Doo? And I was like, yeah. And, and the Jetsons? Yeah. And, and now you're, you're working with Jim Henson? Like, how are you doing all this? Tell us how you're doing all this. And I go... <laughs> I don't know. I don't stay up and do coke till five in the morning. <laughs> Maybe that. Maybe that's it. But, you know. Okay. That's that, that, yeah. Family friendly. Dave, that's the one thing about yeah. comedy, and I've told yeah. Lauren the jealousy. You know, those yeah. guys did they really want to know? But they were jealous of you because you were so successful at an early age. Correct. I don't know uh, if it was that or I, you bit. know. I don't know. I was kind of the new kid in town, right. you right. know. Right. And I came out and I did a Cheech and Chong movie right oh, away. Okay. And then I jealousy, I, jealousy. I hosted okay. a series <laughs> yeah. on Nickelodeon called You're Out talented. of Control. You got, yeah. Yeah. Well, and uh, well, timing, for whatever yeah. reason, yeah. I yeah. I just worked really hard. Uh -huh. That's a, that's okay. that's all I had. I knew that there were really talented people out here, mm -hmm. and I knew that what I was up against. And I just thought, I just have to just keep working as hard as I possibly can. How did you get in the door? Because you're saying, and also, which, what voices? Because I love the Jetsons. Like, that's so cool. Like, how did, but how did you get in the door? Because I think that's what they were asking. Well, uh, there's a lot of doors. Yeah. There's not just one door. And you have to knock on every single one of them. And you can't be afraid to get the response from any of those doors. Because most of the time, uh, you're going to fail, and you can't be afraid of that. And now I do a lot of college stand-up dates, and I speak to students, and they they always want to know, what's the magical formula? And I said, hard work. And they're like, well, what does that mean? And I said, well, you, you can't be afraid to be a big failure. I said, you're looking at one of the biggest failures you've ever seen in your life. You know, you know my successes, but there are so many failures along the way. So I started doing seminars calling fail, Failing Your Way to Success. Aww. And I said, you yeah. have to be able to look failure in the eye and say, okay, gotcha, <laughs> moving on to the next. Like in sports so, or whatever, you've got to fail before you succeed, right? Absolutely. I mean, that's really what it's and all no about. one teaches people how to fail. Right. 
And that's why I think for, sports is actually a great metaphor mm -hmm. for kids because it does teach them how to lose. Mm -hmm. And I think every kid should be playing a sport because yeah. it really is kind of a, a great learning platform for later in life when people just go, nope, sorry, you're not talented enough. You're not Get good back looking up, enough. Dust yourself off, yeah. go right back at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. great. That's, that's great advice. What was auditioning for Full House like? Was it multiple auditions or? Uh, it was one audition. And uh, I was auditioning for everything, and I, I was supposed to be on the last episode of MASH, and I missed that. And wow. I went in on that several times. And then I auditioned for, I did a screen test at NBC for Saturday Night Live, and my manager, Brad Gray, uh, who later you know became chairman of Paramount Studios, um, he was my manager. He uh, called me up after I my, did my screen test at NBC, and he was like, Dave, uh, you're going to New York. I just got off the phone with Lauren Michaels. And I said, oh, man, this is great. So I told everybody in my life, I'm going to New York to be on SNL. And I got rid of my apartment in, in uh, oh, North boy. Hollywood. Oh. And I told my family and boxed up everything. And it was just, it was a huge thing. And so then um, I was supposed to find an apartment in New York. And I'm getting ready to leave. And a few days before I was supposed to leave, Brad called me back. He said, hey, uh, you didn't get the show. And I'm like, what? Uh -huh. He goes, Brandon Tartikoff thinks you're a little too close. You look too close to Dana Carvey at the time. And I was just crushed. So I had to call everybody back in my life and say, I didn't get it. I'm not going to be on Saturday Night Live. Had I gone and been on Saturday Night Live, I would have never received the script for Full House. Now, when you, I would have been in New York. when you did Saturday Night Live, did you go to New York right in front of Lauren and do all that stuff like every No, oh. I actually met him at a hotel here and did my bits for him one-on-one -on -one in a hotel room. He wanted to see what I was going to do oh for my, my screen test. Oh. He was like, that's good, Dave. Okay, that's good. That's, I like, that's good. I like, I like the Randy Newman. That's good. That's good. And so I did my screen test, and I remember the last thing I did in my screen test, I took my shirt off. And I do this thing called a dying walrus, which just sounds like a giant hand fart. And I rolled around <laughs> on the floor, and I remember hearing everybody in the in the control room cracking up. And I thought, "Ooh, I got a big laugh on the on the way out." And so, you know, that was a monumental fail. Mm -hmm. And then uh, seven months later, I was shooting the pilot for Full House. And that's the thing: the yeah. universe made you. Miss that. To get to that. Get, to Everything get that. happens yeah. for a reason. Thank That's you, amazing. Yeah. 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 And you that ever... was a miserable season that year uh -huh. on SNL. The, the, all the actors and the comedians were, yeah. were miserable. I heard about it. And they were like, oh, wow. thank God. You, you know why? Because you, you weren't on weren't the show. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dave. That's how it works out, buddy. Yeah, yeah. So. They had told all their friends and family that you were going to be on the show. And then when that didn't happen, yeah. they were so upset and fail. Do you have a favorite episode? A full house? Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, and I hate to admit this, yeah. but I really have never watched the show. But I, I'm not kidding either. When my son was Boy. growing up, he used to call it Daddy's Show. He'd oh. say, can I watch uh. Daddy's Show? And I'd be like, finish your broccoli. <laughs> so it was nice having a TV show that I could, you know. Yeah, use. Yeah, I could use against your benefit, son. yeah. But um, I've really never watched the show. I'm the last person I want to watch. And so I get very uncomfortable watching myself. I, it's just my own personal whatever. But uh, I have memories of shows, and I remember the hockey episode was one of my favorites. One, I remember one scene where a cement truck backs up into our kitchen and pours <laughs> cement into the kitchen, and I'm wearing uh, headphones, and I'm supposed to be in some kind of like trance. And <laughs> um, I know that that was a really funny scene because I remember the laughter from the audience that night. So they already they knew, knew you at ABC. So did you have to audition? Or? I didn't have to audition. Um, the people at ABC, the casting people, had seen me in, in the improv and the comedy ABC. store. And I had auditioned for other shows and didn't get them. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so they knew me really well. Right. So when Tom Miller and Bob Boyette said, John and Dave are our guys, they yeah. just said, yeah, of course, great. That's awesome. Did you know John before that? I met John uh, across the street with Jeff Franklin at uh, across the street from the improv. And we had lunch, and Jeff wanted to introduce us. 
and uh, John got in a car accident on his way there that day. Whoa. And then John called Jeff afterwards and said, that guy's the, he's the comedian on the show. He's the most unfunny guy I've ever met. When's he going to be funny? Because I was just there and I was just like, <laughs> okay, I'm taking it all in, you know? Yeah, and yeah. John was already, you know, well known as an actor and, and so, uh, you know, I was, I was quiet. I was just kind of <laughs> taking in all the information. And, you know, my, I didn't want to be this funny guy like, hey, look at me, man. Yeah, hoo, we, hoo, hoo, boy, yeah, it's going to yeah. be crazy on this show. Crazy, I'm telling you. <laughs> you know, but uh, that was John's takeaway from that day. Wow. Yeah. That's but awesome. The rest, but the rest is history. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so are you, like, you guys all like a family still? We are so close. It's, uh, it's ridiculous. We've never been apart. Uh, it's it's really crazy, but you know we've been through births and deaths and marriages and divorces and drugs and alcoholism. I mean, you oh, name wow. it. You know we've yeah. we've gone through what a family goes through, but mm -hmm. through yeah. thick and thin, we've remained together, and uh, they really are my family. Mm -hmm. You know, Dave, you and I are always straight with each other, and you know Lauren is my buddy, <laughs> and she uh, is the host. You know, the face of the show. But she always, you know, she always had this crush on you, but she always wanted to be a net, uh, uh, you're about, about what, her no, uh, That's Alanis Morissette. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she wanted to ask you a question about it. I wanted about to ask it. about Alanis. <laughs> I was going to get there later, Oh, you were way later. Wait, I tomorrow? Know. Wow. Well, <laughs> oh, you went right in there. You went, right? you went It's a good right. segue. Uh, I, I, you know, I told Brad, and Brad was like, you got you to tell, you got to tell him that you're that you had a crush on him. I'm like, what? Well, I'm it's like, okay. That's I have a I have a crush on him. I know you do. I know you do. Yeah. Romance, <laughs> romance. Embarrassed. <laughs> so I want to know about Atlantis. I have to know about Atlantis. Well, was... uh, she's one of the most talented and and lovely people I've ever met. Um, she is uh, really. Uh, I don't think she gets enough credit for how wonderful her sense of humor is. <laughs> And I think that's what really attracted us. I am a hockey player. I was playing in the Heroes of Hockey game in Montreal. And um, it was at the All-Star game that year. I believe it was 1991, possibly. And um, I'm standing out on the ice. And it's this, we're playing at the Montreal Forum. And it's completely full. And here comes this beautiful girl out that they introduced to sing the national anthem, the American and Canadian national anthem. And when she walks on the ice, I'm standing next to Gordie Howe, who was my childhood wow. idol. And she walks out and she gives me this big, beautiful smile. And I looked at her and I smiled back and I go, Gordie, I wish I wasn't wearing a cup right now. <laughs> And Gordy, and Gordy had the greatest line. He goes, you know, if you lay down in the ice face first, that'll go away. <laughs> Great. Gordy, oh, my Gordy, God. How? Quick. Quick. So um, after the game, I went out with my buddies. I got food poisoning and missed the entire weekend, right, right after the game. Uh, I was in my room the entire weekend, sick with food poisoning. I'm checking out of the hotel. I've got to go back. This is Sunday. Checking out of the hotel. On Monday, I've got to start back up on another episode of Full House. So Alana sees me, and she walks over. She goes, you've been gone all weekend. Where were you? I was kind of looking around for you. I said, I've been sick, sweating in my room for the last two and a half days. She's like, you're kidding. So we start talking, and we hit it off. She goes, well, look, can I, if I can convince you to stay for another day, I'll take you on a complete tour of Montreal. And I said, I'll call in sick. And then this big... Snowstorm came and we just um, hit it off. Mm -hmm. Wow. And uh, we were together almost two years, but our lives had really grown apart. Mm -hmm. I was a new father, newly divorced, and I really wanted to be there for my son. And here I've got this girl, not just in another state, she's in another country, right. a couple thousand miles away. And, you know, we tried to make it work. And uh, she was lovely, mm -hmm. you know, lo a lovely, lovely human being. But it, in my life at the time, it was not the right choice mm -hmm. for me. And the right timing. Yeah. yeah. So was she... not, uh, yeah, she said to me, the last thing she said was right person, wrong timing, right? Aww. And I said, yeah. Oh, wow. Oh. So. so did she write the song for you? Was that? You know, I that's such an urban legend now. But um, <laughs> when we were together, she was writing all that music. That's amazing. And so we would make jokes like, hey, I'm going to dead fish you. And it was the dead fish handshake. And there's this line in that album, your shake is like a fish. 
And I know what the bug you in the middle of dinner thing is because she called me and I said, hey, can I call you right back? I'm just in the middle of dinner. My son was little and I'm feeding him. And I said, you know, and so I hate to bug you in the middle. I don't know what the theater thing was. Yeah. You know, um, wow. but um, wow, that's, that's great. That's pretty cool. But it's pretty. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. And just I have nothing. I have so many wonderful stories to tell about her of, of nice things that she did and funny things and, and good things that I will, you know, I'll yeah. never, have I never pa- saw that angry female. <laughs> that have you ever, have your paths ever crossed since then? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, oh that's nice. That's many, many years ago after, yeah. but mm-hmm. uh, this was after she was already just kaboom. You know? Yeah. Right, right. And uh, it was quite lovely. You that's talk about your son. How old is he and what does he do? My son Luke is yeah. uh, 28. Wow. He's a um, he's a captain for SkyWest Airlines. Oh my Aww. goodness! And uh, he's six four. Wow. Plays hockey just like dad. Plays golf just like dad. And, and face uh, man just like dad. <laughs> a what? A face man. Good looking guy like that? He's a good looking kid. Okay. Yeah. Thank goodness his uh, mom was, was, um, <laughs> mom was there. Yeah. But um, nice. he's a great kid and uh, we talk every day uh, and I couldn't have a better your son. best friend. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Lauren, you know, Dave and I met back back in the day and uh, Dave was on another show called America's Funniest People. Yeah. There's America's Funniest mm-hmm. Videos, America's Funniest People. And Dave was the host, and I was the warm-up guy. That's amazing. I was the guy. Do you want to the, explain? Because I don't think oh, everyone a knows. A warm-up guy is the guy that comes out before Dave comes out and the host, and yeah. I warm up the audience. I tell uh-huh. them what the show's about. I, I make jokes. I make fun of myself. I tell them I'm going to give them stuff, but they've got to laugh when I need them to laugh and have that energy for, what, three hours that we filmed. Wow. It was a long day. It was a long days, and we did this, and... I love what I do because Dave made it so much fun for me. And Dave and I created some bits, you uh-huh. know, throughout the night. And one of the great bits, and I okay. want to show you one All of right. them. So Dave would be standing there, and he'd be like going over some notes with the, with the, with the, with the writers and everything. And then they would leave, and I'm like, wait, wait, stop, everybody, stop, please. And Dave, could you put your foot up here, please? Yes. So Dave, I would lean down, I would run, lean down, take the hanky at him, and I would go like this. And as I ran, as I bent over, Dave would do this. And then everybody would just start crying, laughing, and I'd be so embarrassed, and I'd run off. Every time we did it, we yeah. must have done it a hundred and ten times. Everybody loves a fart joke. Everybody, everybody loves, everybody loves a fart joke. And we just—it was just organic, and it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's physical comedy, and you did so much of it on on Full House, which I loved. I did. It. Was it a natural? Did were you always physical in your comedy? Yeah, yeah, I, I, just a yeah. I, I think visually, and um, you know, someone tripping on, on something. Uh-huh. You know, and they don't get hurt. Oh. Just makes me laugh every time. It, it, the Three Stooges. People do get hurt. Yeah. 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 yeah, but um, yeah, Three Stooges. I loved mm-hmm. oh, Three that, Stooges yeah. growing up and physical comedy mm-hmm. and Buster Keaton and Charlie Chaplin. I loved mm-hmm. you know all of that that kind of now, stuff. Now there's there's so many episodes we could t- we could talk about. I could talk about Falls for hours right now. So there's right. the the wrestling one. So are you real? Did you really <laughs> wrestle? Like did you really want to wrestle? <laughs> no, because it looks no. good. Yeah, yeah, it it no, uh, you, you know there were so many things that our producers didn't know about. They were like, we want to get you playing hockey on the show, but they knew nothing about hockey. And John and Bob are not athletes, so they'd be like, can you show John how to throw a baseball? Oh. <laughs> or can you shoot a basket so Bob knows how to shoot a basket? <laughs> and I'd go, Bob, come on, come on. You look like my aunt right now <laughs> shooting a basket. Dave, stop it. And I'm like, you get a like <laughs> yeah. So I always had to teach those guys the sports mm-hmm. stuff. Oh, okay. So um, you, you got the last season of uh, Fuller House, and by the way, you're directing now. That's Dir- so cool. Yeah, directing yeah. some of the shows, which is which yeah. has just been a great challenge. I just great. had some sort of a storyline. I would think somebody very close to me right now might should be on the show Fuller House, maybe. Uh, really? Uh, yeah. Okay. I was just thinking maybe we'll have to talk about that later. What okay. do you think about All that, right. Dave? Uh, uh, yeah. Joey's love interest. Joey's love interest. There we go. go. Okay. Yeah. Joey's okay. love okay. interest. We'll talk about it. We'll develop it. There you and go. And we'll do it this season because this is the last season. <laughs> yes. Uh, what other uh, projects do you have uh, in the works? What's going well, on? Well, I uh, now that I've moved to Detroit, I've connected with a lot of filmmakers and people who are doing television back there, which oh. is really inspiring. In fact, there's a, uh, a documentary sh- you should check out uh, produced by a woman named Je- Jenny Faterovich, and it's called The Russian Five. And it's streaming everywhere, and it's a really great documentary. The New York Times just raved about it. And it's, um, it, it describes uh, 
this the high and low point in Detroit when five Russians uh, defected to the United States, played for the Red Wings, and then a terrible limousine accident uh, damaged one of the players right when they won the Stanley Cup. 42-year drought, they get in this accident, so wow. it goes from here wow. to here. Oh, that's and cool. it's really oh. a compelling, uh, beautiful story. It's well done. So I've connected with those people there locally, mm -hmm. and I've got a couple of movies. One's called Santana Claus. It's about a Mexican who saves Christmas. Oh, nice. Um, so we want to shoot that there. And then I've got another movie. I, I got on a Christmas binge <laughs> writing Christmas movies. Another one's called Santa Shrink. Oh, uh, and you wrote it. You wrote it. I wrote, oh, yeah, oh, I wrote, wow. I wrote, I wrote oh, that's wrote awesome. Movies. And then I have another movie called Janet of the Apes. It's about a girl who's <laughs> she's covered in hair, and it's a funny story. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I have a show that I'm developing with Invent TV out here. Um, called Little Stinkers, and it's a prank show where kids uh, prank adults. That's oh, that's awesome. Cool. Oh, that's my really goodness. And I, would, oh. and I would host that. So, oh, so we're putting that together. Do you, you need a warm-up guy? <laughs> we'd have a warm-up guy. Oh, really? really? We, we'd have a warm-up guy. Oh, I want to I wanna shoot it in Detroit, though, at a studio. Oh, really? there. So, I, I, so you'll go to Detroit? I, no, I can't, I, I'm, I'm, on the, I'm on the bus. Oh, there no, you go. Are leaving? No, 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 I'll be back. I'll be back. Just, uh, just for one day shoot. we got to stay together, Dave. For a little while, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Dave, this has been amazing. Yes, it's been so great. Thank you so much for coming. My favorite episode is you with the cats. The cat commercial one. Oh, uh, Kitty Krispies. Did you yeah. did you write any of that, or did you go around and when you're fixing John and your hair? I, uh, John and I improved a lot of stuff, uh -huh. and that was one of those things where we kind of improved and the improv uh, built the story and built the bit. So. That was really a great, fu really funny jingle. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, really, yeah really that was a fun one. Yeah. It's probably going to be touching the last episode yeah. of the season. Uh, this is it, huh? Well, yeah. we don't know if this is it because oh. there may be fullest house. Yeah, oh, that would be it. I told you it was never going to end. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, I, all right. the, the show yeah. has done so <laughs> remarkably well. We've never been off the air since we oh. premiered in 1987. And wow. The show, uh, we won the People's Choice Award, Kids' Choice Award. Um, the uh, What's the other one? Kids' Choice, People's Choice. Choice. Critics' and, Choice. Uh, Critics' Choice. We won the... We won. All the we were nominated for an Emmy this past yeah. season, so the show is really strong. It's kind of like the Brady Bunch of of today. You it know? is. It, it is. is. You know? Yeah, and it's and it's a family, and people just love seeing this family together. So yeah. who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? I can say one thing. I've been in the business a long time, and. You meet all sorts of people, and mm -hmm. Dave's had so much success. It couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Yeah. Dave, you Thank really you. are. You're good people, man. I'll take good it. We stuff. can hang out anytime. All right. I appreciate that. Oh, you wanted to do, before we left, you're going to teach everyone oh, the correct Dave, way to do right cut it out. Could you go right into the camera and yeah. give me when everybody direct. must come up to you? This so, camera right here. And, yeah. A lot of people get it wrong. Yeah. Uh, people will come up to me in the airport. Yeah. I had one guy come up. He was like, hey, man, knock it around. And I was like, <laughs> cut it out. And he's like, oh, you, you got it. Like, somehow... I was going to mess up yeah. my own bit. <laughs> right. So it's just real simple. It's cut. cut. And then you point. Point. And then you go out. Oh, I like oh, that. That's how you Let's do, do it. it together. That's awesome. Cut, cut it out. Dave yeah. Coulier, yeah. everybody. Amazing. Oh, Thank you. Goodness. And I see on your website you're selling cut it out t-shirts. It's really cool. Uh, yeah, we've got uh, woodchuck shirts and, and all kinds of silly all stuff. All amazing. So. And amazing what is that thing. website? What is that? Uh, where people DaveCoulier.com. I don't know okay. how I came up with that. But oh, my God. I brainstormed. You are a, a genius. Yeah. You, know, you are. Brainstormed for quite a while on that one. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Any, any tips for, any last tips for people who want to kind of come out here and, and just move to L.A.? And yeah, be an actor or a comedian? Just work really hard. That's, mm -hmm. all, that's all I've got. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. all I can tell you is you have to outwork everyone or everyone, you know, they're not giving sitcoms out at the yeah. quarter of, you know, yeah. Sunset and Vine. And a lot of people come out here and they give up, but the work ethic yeah. and just keep pushing. Don't give up, you know. Well, you know, you see all these internet stars, you yeah. know, that happens from yeah. their, their garage or right. their bedroom, you right. know, and right. it just... You know, that's one in a million. Mm -hmm. it, and and yeah. so you have to really come out and put the work in. You want to go on every rung of the ladder yeah. and, and learn something at, you know, each level. And that takes hard work. Yeah. 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 Hard thank work. You, thank you so much for coming thank on. You. So awesome to meet you. Oh, so, so awesome. Everyone, make sure you follow him everywhere. It's D. Couillier. D. Couillier.com. Oh, I'm sorry. D. Couillier at, at, at Instagram. Instagram. D. Coulier Instagram. You know, Twitter. However that works. Yeah. You'll, you'll find me. Yeah. Uh, or you can watch on Netflix, right? We're on Netflix. I, we're on Hulu. Uh, Full House is on Hulu and iTunes. And uh, I'm sure it's running right now everywhere. somewhere. And somewhere. of course, the last season of uh, Fuller House on, on, on We're doing 18 episodes. 
18. Wow, that's great. That's awesome. And which uh, number is Lauren going to be on? Oh, I'm sorry. I just keep pushing Well, that. it might be several. <laughs> oh! oh. We didn't, hey, cut we it didn't, out! We didn't talk about your episode, though. Oh, Brad's, my episode, Brad's, yeah. Brad's, Brad's, oh, that, they can Brad's see that. on yeah. it, guys. So you guys uh, got to yeah. go watch Brad this, on it. The disgruntled uh, Giants he's, fan. He's, it was uh, a great time. It was, I, was so, I was so shocked by your, by, by your character there. Yeah, I'm a nice guy, but I, I'm an actor. I yeah. can play, I can play a, a disgruntled uh, Giants fan. <laughs> but, All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Dave, you got That's something right here, Dave? What's Where? That? Right there. Oh! <laughs> <laughs>